So you're logged in, you should see your username. So one of the two inspectors that are on site that day should have their name up here. I am T Davis. Once you are in, this is the desktop version. As you guys saw on the tablet, uh, it will say start inspection and you'll be in the mobile app, which is a little bit more uh, refined, but this is the desktop version, so you have more capability. So create an inspection. You're the coordinating agency, so that's always gonna leave, be left South Dakota. This is where you're gonna be putting in your inspection station location at. So let's say you were Let's just say this is uh, the Mitchell location. That's saying a southeast ramp. That's if you're doing an entrance inspection, but we'll treat this as our Mitchell roadside inspection station. Your inspector number should be there. This is always gonna be 605, and then whatever region that you're in, so we're, we're in region three, and then your inspector number is these last two numbers. And I will create those for you and let you know what those are. This will auto-populate your date and time this is gonna be what type of inspection you're doing. Are they off water, outgoing, so an exit inspection, incoming, entrance inspection, or both, which would be, you know, you're at a volunteer situation where you're inspecting all boats coming in and off the water body. So for us, we're gonna be off water. Now you are ready to talk to the boat owner. My name is Tanner Davis, or you don't have to give your full name. Say I'm a watercraft inspector for South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. We are conducting watercraft inspections today. I'm just needing to take down a, a little bit of information quick, uh, if you don't mind, and I'll be right back to speak with you. You're gonna get their registration number from them. Let's say it's WD345, uh, or 346, as mentioned, you never put in their state in that. Uh, that auto populates for uh, the registration number. License plate number, 1111. Local boater, if it's from state, in, in South Dakota, it's yes. If out of state, it's a no. I just, down the road, then we can look at number of in-state boaters versus out-of-state boaters. You're gonna identify what type of watercraft you're looking at. So if you're gonna be looking at a jet ski, always use PWC, please. Don't put in jet ski. I wanna have it as one item. Okay, so fishing boat. This is gonna be primarily what you're gonna be looking at. Propulsion. This is gonna be looking at your motor. Is this an outboard motor, inboard motor, inboard outboard motor, electric, jet, or a sail? Outboard motor is gonna be most of what you're gonna be looking at for fishing boats, otherwise inboard outboard um, are also relatively common. This is if they're hauling multiple vessels. Usually you're not gonna to have to deal with this, but let's say they're hauling three big kayaks that have, or canoes that have to be registered. That's when you'd add more in here. Seal location. Some states require you to put a seal in between your trailer and your watercraft. It seals them together to know that you have not been on any water body in between inspections. We do not have a seal program in South Dakota, so you can leave this blank. Same with the seal color, seal code. We also don't even, we also don't do receipts in the state, so you're just gonna leave uh, let's see. Yep, you're just gonna leave those blank. Last water visited. 
Okay, South Dakota. So they went to Madison. Auto populates like Madison. Yep. And try to do the lake in general versus like a boat ramp. So if you, I don't know if you guys saw that. It also showed one of the access locations. Please just click the, click the lake. Add another <coughs> water visited. I'm assuming do all non-infested water bodies. Uh, Swan Lake, okay. Great. Zip code, you're gonna have to get that from them. That's the fourth question we did not ask in a training video, but you'll have to get the zip code. Oh, I'm sorry. These are for the seals. Or no, no, these are no, these are where you put your waters visited. Madison, I apologize. So Madison Lake been doing any positive waters. So if this was Lake Campesca, you would go into here, South Dakota. Lake Campesca. If you were to put Lake Campesca up here, On the mobile app, there should be a ZM right behind the thread. Next destination, uh, oh, where are you headed to? This is a big question. So let's say they are going through your roadside check and they are going to Wyoming. We have uh, a program that alerts other states when we have a positive water body going to another state. Uh, call before you haul. So we want to make sure that when we ask them, you know, where they've been and where are they going? Okay, they're going to Wyoming. And then you would type in a lake for Wyoming. This would be like where they store their, so it's probably like their end destination. You don't have to worry about that um, in the inspection app. Vessel registration state. This is where we're gonna put in South Dakota. Now this is going through the inspection. So this is when you go talk to your buddy that's inspecting the boat already after you've been talking to them. You're going to check the boxes for anything that applies. Do they have ballast tanks? Do they have standing water? Is this a complex watercraft? Is it dusty or dirty, crusty, or slimy? Long, all of those are no. This is going to expedite you to the finishing product. But if you check yes for any of these, it will bring you into the high risk situation. So. When doing your inspection, it's gonna ask you if you inspected all these locations. So the app really helps you not forget anything during your inspection process. Oh, yep, I, I checked the hull, checked the anchor compartments, checked the engine, made sure it was drained. Everything's drained for interior compartments. If you're looking at a larger boat that has a sea strainer, You'd look at that filter, but most case scenario, you're not gonna see that. Some states use a muscle dog to detect muscles. You, we don't have that in South Dakota, so you don't have to worry about that. We also don't have a AISD count in state, so not required. Plugs out. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that we document this correctly. If the plug was out, it is a yes. If the plug was out, it is or if the plug was not out, it is a no. Hopefully, nine times out of 10, because that's on average what we see for compliance is roughly 90 to 95%. Plugs out, it's a yes. Based off this, so 
So one thing I forgot to mention, live bait present. If this is another question you should ask them, do you have any live bait present? If they say yes, where is that at? If it's in the truck or the boat, ask to quickly inspect that. Couple of giveaways. If there's a bunch of algae in the water, they probably collected this from a lake, river, or stream, or they were in a lake, river, and stream with that bait and didn't remove that water. We wanna make sure that this is uh, water that was not coming from any of our naturally occurring resources in the state, lake, river, or stream. So people might just voluntarily show you their receipt, but you know, use your common sense here. Make sure this water's clean and there isn't anything alarming in there. If you see some weird looking fish in there, you're gonna wanna inspect that further because they might have silver carp in there if they saint, or if they did a beach seine or did a cast net down in town. Most times or not, this is gonna be minnows. You just check them over really quick. They're good to go. Most people have those in their truck and that's why you asked that. So you can quickly check it. If it's in a bait shop bag, they're good to go. Um, let's say they're big cat fishermen and they're using uh, bluegill. This is when you're gonna wanna really check the water and make sure that they're not using lake water and they did this the proper way and that was bringing uh, dechlorinated tap water with them. If they don't have any bait, then to make sure they eat easier. But if they do, that's just the steps you need to do to make sure that they are in compliance. If you see plants on the boat or trailer and you can manually remove them, you click manually remove for decontamination contamination results. If you cannot manually remove them, you're gonna be doing a plant decontamination. If there's standing water in there that you cannot sponge out or towel out, a standing water decontamination is need to be conducted, you check that. Hopefully you don't have to click this, but if you do, it's gonna be fine. Uh, sometimes you're gonna be doing multiple. So let's say you did a plant decontamination and uh, you know, click the, all that apply. It's not just a one, one or nothing. You can click multiple ones of these. If you're having to go through a full decontamination, they're gonna ask you more questions. Like I said, in the mobile app, if you are showing this is a low risk boat, they're not gonna ask you these types of questions. You're not gonna have to worry about them and it's gonna bring you right to the end of the of the questionnaire and they're gonna be on their way. But if it is a high risk boat, it's gonna auto populate these extra questions that you have to answer. On the mobile app, there's gonna be multiple pages and you're gonna have to click the next button on the top right corner of each screen to go to the next page. Once again, the app is usually user friendly and if you don't answer all the questions, it will show that in red and make you answer that question before moving on. Just try to make sure that you're double checking or answering all the questions before moving on to the next page and click the next button to get to that next page. Reason for decon. This is important. Is it because one of the following, known or suspect muscles, that's usually what you use for a full decon. Original location, this is where they were infested at. So you're gonna click one of those infested water bodies. These are gonna be all the infested water bodies in the United States that you can go through. Um, you can also type in the first letter or the two letters and they'll bring you right to that. So if you don't wanna scroll through, you wanna to go to South Dakota. They'll bring you right down to that if you just type in SD. It saves you a little bit of time. Destination, once again, we wanna make sure that we can alert anyone else that needs to know that this boat is going somewhere else, but in fact that it has been deconned by us. Other states might not recognize our, de our decons as valid and they might still decontaminate them. Others might, so it, it could potentially save some time, but it also the big thing is letting them know that they need to be prepared that this boat might be coming through their state. So they're going, they'll tell you where to go, but you'll just click one of those. If you're practicing this, which I encourage you guys to go through this on the mobile app before you get out in the field, just so you're comfortable with it. If you have any questions, you can ask one of us. Just make sure if you're going through the steps on these, 
don't do what I did for my first inspection or my first training last year and click submit. I simulated a positive water body and then everyone got alerted that I had a positive muscle follow boat coming across the state. Just, just a forewarning for my mistakes. Don't worry about in, any invalid seal. Uh, components decontaminated. Most times this is gonna be like your engine or, or any of the interior compartments or the hull. Pre-self-explanatory, any place that you had to decontaminate, click on those in there. Inspection notes. This is where I want you to put in plug in or plug out or just plug in. If the plug was in, this is just like a, a backup to you clicking the plug in, plug out. We wanna make sure that this is documented correctly Every one of our plugins should have a note in there. Plug was in, removed after alerting owner. Simple and then done. So yeah, um, I'm not as familiar with the... Do it again. At the end of the day, when you come back to the office, you should, always make, you should always make sure that you're uploading all of your inspections from that day. So when you go into the Watercraft Inspection app, there's gonna be five different options when you first start. Either start an inspection or upload inspections are gonna be your first two. Click the upload inspections and you'll know if you need to upload any one, if you did any inspections that day, or two, if that number associated on that same line is higher than zero. That means there's inspections that have not been uploaded yet, and you're gonna click on that to upload them. Since there's zero on there, it will let you know that. No inspections to upload. Otherwise, it will automatically upload them for you. If you have any issues with uploading them or it gives you any error code, please let me or your, the supervisor on call no, so we can address that at the beginning of the next week so we don't lose those inspections. Every once in a while, a tablet might, you know, if in a bad situation, let's say a tablet gets broken. We don't want to have a bunch of inspections sitting on these tablets in case something like that happens. We had one that got waterlogged that got ruined, another one got ran over in a backpack. So just making sure that we're uploading those on a daily basis, we'll be in good shape. Other we'll have like the weeks that I that you guys are going to be doing your uh, your WID. That fourth day you, you might have uh, something unrelated to actual WID with AIS to do. We There's a chance we might do, uh, this is a maybe, but either like snorkel surveys or just feeling around on uh, substrate near or near shore. Uh, if we have a incident pop up where we might have uh, suspect muscles on a new lake, we might go out and check that. Uh, Velager toes potentially if the algae isn't super bad. Uh, uh, stencils on boat ramps, painting boat plug in, plug out. Uh, or there might be some reports of shot up signs that we need to replace. Those are just all just different examples that we might uh, need to go check something out or, uh, you know, not saying all of this will happen, but like, you know, maybe uh, going out and doing a veg survey or, uh, or just a shoreline survey in general. Those are all just things that we might be doing. I thought we were gonna have more sign placement to do, but you guys need to thank your full-time staff. They did it, most of it, before you guys got on. That was gonna be your first week and a half of work was gonna be putting up signs, but they helped out with that, so. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll try to get those uh, usernames up and running this week and let you guys know what your inspection numbers 
where your inspector numbers are for the app. And password zebra one. Yep. 